Hi, Jack. Hi. Thanks for joining and for contributing. Uh, uh, would you like, uh, like to tell us a little more about yourself first? I'm Jack Stilgo. I'm Senior Lecturer in Science Technology Policy at uh, University College London. Great. Tell me a little about Responsible Innovation and what that is. Well, Responsible Innovation is um, it's a set of ideas and practices that I and a few others have been working on, which are just about ways to better govern emerging science and technology in the public interest. So the, the old question of science and technology policy, how do you ensure that the science and innovation that gets uh, supported and regulated is better aligned with uh, public needs and values? Um, and responsible innovation is a way of uh, structuring thinking around those things based upon experiences that will be familiar to, to European scientists and policymakers controversies to do with uh, genetically modified crops um, and more recently debates that have taken place around things like synthetic biology, nanotechnology, uh, my own work has been on geoengineering. It's these ideas where there are controversial, potentially radically disruptive uh, areas of emerging technology that have the potential to benefit but also uh, have the potential to create new risks, new ethical dilemmas uh, and are highly uncertain. So there's the question of how do we govern science and innovation uh, under conditions of profound uncertainty? We don't know what science and innovation will do to us in the future, and yet we know that it's really powerful, and so we should seek to govern in the public interest. Mm. Can you give me an example of how that framework works? What, what's the content in that framework? So... It, clearly, this will mean very different things in different areas of science and technology. So what this means for a genetically modified seed will be rather different from what it means for, say, uh, a robot or mm. a geoengineering research uh, project. Um, but the way that we've structured it is in terms of uh, four what we call uh, dimensions, which are uh, anticipation, uh, inclusion, reflexivity, and then responsiveness. So it's about encouraging scientists, innovators, policy makers and their collaborators to work along those five dimensions, thinking about anticipating intended and unintended consequences, thinking about including new voices in the discussions around those, uh, reflecting themselves on their own assumptions that they're making, and then finally responding, changing direction in the light of those, uh, in the light of those discussions. And the idea is that if you take those four broad principles and sort of work them through mm. with different uh, areas of science and technology, then uh, you'll lead to a more constructive uh, way of, of, of governing progress. Mm. And I mean, as you mentioned in your work, y you think that the, these sort of principles are applicable across sectors. I mean, how, what, what's your thinking about these about responsible innovation and, and algorithms or artificial intelligence or similar? Sure. Um, so I think it's, there are some easy cases and there are some hard cases. Mm. And uh, my own work has been on geoengineering, which, if you like, is one of the easy cases mm. because there the scientists themselves, most of them are deeply troubled themselves by the prospect of even researching the ideas of, 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 of possibly engineering our way out of climate change because that technological fix is so enormous mm -hmm. and the responsibilities are so enormous. And so that's, that's sort of the easy case. And I think when it comes to things like um, algorithms, artificial intelligence, these more sort of diffuse things where it's a bit harder to get a feel for what the politics of those issues is, um, I think those are some of the harder cases. So one of the questions that we have tried to encourage people to ask as part of a responsible innovation approach is not just what are the risks of doing this, but also why are you doing this? So as well as just the products of science and innovation, it's about talking about the purposes, which is a much more political set of questions. And when it comes to something like the use of an algorithm or the application of a large data set, those purposes quite often are intentionally or accidentally uh, hidden away from, from public view. And so raising that discussion to the surface, I think, becomes much harder in those cases. Mm. 